it gets us to a third map, surprisingly, of Anubis. And that is one we barely have any reps uh, of VP in recent times, Ted. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, going into this one, let's be honest, it, it never should have been a third map. It was always supposed to be a 2-0 for Virtus Pro, especially after you've seen him get nine rounds on, on that first half on Enshin. I know, obviously, these sides have been really lackluster for both teams so far in the series, but we, we just thought after a 9-3, after such a one-sided showing as well on uh, in the second half of Dust2 that VP would have had uh, all that it took to close it out. But hey, apparently not. Thunderpick still have them uh, as the favorites to pick this one up. But OG, D-side, Anubis, definitely we finally see a good D-side, right? And the bomb can already go down on B on the pistol. They have a utility left, of course, or anything else to work with here. So... It's going to be down to Fame Smoke and the kit on Flit to get this retake in action. They are grouping up four towards CT, looking for a swing together. Buzz stuck in the corner, can't connect with any headshots, and Fame gets his kill. But Modo will swing off the contact from the back of the site. Jane does really well to find one more, though, and there is Flit. Kit still up, Smoke recovered by Jane. They'll be on the bomb right now, and now it's all down to Fiku. I don't think he's got enough bullets to be able to connect with any of these. He gets some kills, but there's no way you can find the, the diffuser. And uh, all well and good. VP will take it with a nice retake. Yeah, you'd probably not be over ecstatic with dropping a pistol around like this where you were just allowed onto the bomb site to get the plant and then a 5v5 retake comes in. A lot of isolated players it felt like for OG there on the defense, but great work by Jame. Of course, getting a double kill. That's a good start. CT sides have not been problematic. But yeah, we were talking about recent form when it comes down to when it comes down to Anubis. Uh VP have played it twice. In the last three months. Yeah. One of them being a, a 5-13 loss to complexity. The other one being a 13-11 win against Zero Tenacity. And there I say it. A win against Zero Tenacity in the mid of August when they were actually still playing Anubis. is not a bad result. It it, it it stands for something. Even though mm. it's online Counter-Strike and Zero Tenacity. We know Nemanja is there and Nemanja is a demon. Uh, when you're talking about OG, Anubis has been a little bit lackluster. Which for me is actually a bit of a surprising thing. Because... I've always seen Krizen as a really good Anubis player and in-game leader in general. Was one of the best maps for Mouse NXT, but of course this is a different group of players he's got now. Oh. That's big. seen the arm. Oh, oh no. my god. But Fiku deletes him. And I'm sure Electronic maybe had his eyes widen for a second there, realizing there was an opportunity, but they could just get run down again. Fame can't get one from the site. The AK on Mikey gets the open kill with three health to spare. And even though Jame finds Buzz, I think this is a fall away again for VP. They just can't string these rounds together, it feels like, right now. No. And that 1-1-D, one, one by the way, throws such a massive spanner into the works. I know it's just one kill, but there's the fact that Electronic, if he gets that kill, he's going to realize there's no one else in front of B. Rotations towards A are going to be quicker. And Fame would have probably received a little bit of support. Unfortunately for Norbert, a 1 versus 4, and... If we're talking about particular names, Norbert has been one of the one of the most impactful players on the server so far, right? We've not seen too many mistakes. We've seen a lot of good multi kills, even on Enshin, even when they let it slip. He was still doing a good job. So you're probably hoping if you're Virtus Pro that he's going to keep on bringing in the impact. But early on, those are not good signs that, you know, you pick up the pistol around on the CT side, you drop the second one straight away. If you're OG though, those are great oh. signs. That's what you were hoping for. He only just turns around in time to catch Electronic as well. It's It couldn't be worse for Electronic, honestly. He hasn't even dealing with Flit at the end of the round. All that VP can muster is the pistols on the Force Buy around the M4. Four. Five sevens. Right, and put into good use. Yeah. Obviously, you want to have those bonus smokes. That's why you don't opt for the Deagles instead. A lot of choke points on uh, on a map like Anubis. You can log them in. Uh, Well-timed smoke laid in towards the A-bomb side or in towards connector. Or even in towards B-lobby could be a difference maker. Still, not enough to really contest Mikey. Going to keep them at bay. And as of right now, OG just looks really relaxed, right? Just spread around the map. Try and put a little bit of pressure. Bait out the limited utility of Virtus Pro out. Make sure that 
when you group up and want to go into a bomb site, that awkward moment that we just mentioned with the with the brief smoke of a position on 20 seconds doesn't happen. And that's a big kill for Crescent. Very big. And it could easily have caught him there. Missing the instant headshot would have been a one-shot kill. And Bars has taken space as well. A bomb site is going to be under lock and key for OG in a matter of moments. No one close enough to stop this plant or any of the OG players. They may have been checking around the map, and it's a good catch from Fame, but bomb's down already. And now they realize the gun can at least be retrieved on the FAMAS. And uh, actually might be worth saving it, even though it's a FAMAS. Uh, into the next round. We've got Kevlar, as we can see as well. So have something to work with. Fame will be able to drop his 5.7 to Electronic if he stays alive. And they'll have a pretty similar buy. Yeah, absolutely would. Coming in. You want to make sure you don't let VP replay this round. And I'm not sure how big of a fan I am of this. Because now you've given away an AK, right? So you understand the logic. Obviously, them going for uh, for that hunt there. As you pointed out, you don't want to you don't want to let VP have that level of comfort to just replay the same round with, with the rifles and the pistols, right? To just have two shots at it and then be able to fully bind to the next, but now they have an AK as well. And that could be a problem. Look at this buy and tell me this doesn't look like a, a force buy when a CT team doesn't have money. They have an AK, an M4, a Famas, two upgraded pistols, three smokes. Yeah. There were four smokes, three smokes left after the mid one and a flash. This is winnable. If they OG. had a diffuse kit, it would have been full package. OG have to take this round with as much care as any full gun round, um, without a doubt. Obviously, the utility is limited, but that's really not the problem. VP can put in a good shift in this round, possibly win it, have bonus money if they survive with multiple players alive on a half investment, and they'll be confident. I mean, they've got their buy in the next. Bars stuck behind the boxes. They definitely know that, but obviously, they don't want to swing into an angle into that canal position. Not many bullets left oh. for Buzz, but somehow, on the transfer, while blind, I have to say, there's probably a bit of luck involved in that one. He finds Jane too. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, that's a lightning quick shot from Electronic. I was going to say, that flash actually actually blinds him. Gets a double out of it, though, and Moto's got that mid-rotation under a lock. Norbert completely blindsided. Moto actually allows Prison to go down first, and Flit now has the bomb. A one versus two. Moto is all alone here. Got to make sure you don't miss too many of those shots. Piku was in towards that B-bomb side. Flit. Definitely in a winnable position. He's got the bomb, an AK, and he's got head armor. Oh, this is flit. Sort of flit round where he can take these, but he's just been timing. Obviously, he knew he was stuck between two angles. Betwixt in between, one of those where you feel like he could win, but not to be on this occasion. Stopped by the forehead. And no, not Jovino. That's an old school reference, by the way. Anyone gets yeah, that? Yeah, I know. Our Arsenal player. Yeah, yeah, of course. There you go. An absolute legend. <laughs> Love them. He was so OP on FIFA 09 as well. It was great. Yes. Yeah. Not 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 as many notorious uh, foreheads as the one of Gervinho and <laughs> Piku. We're talking about forehead cultural impact during a tactical timeout. I'm sure that's what they're doing as well in the server, but all in all, back to it. OG, not a bad start on that T side. Yeah, this round was probably a lot more closer than uh, you would have wished if you're on the T side of things, especially money-wise. Finances are probably not going to be great, but VP early on on the CT side have been struggling. Now, this is not any other CT side, this is a Nubis CT side. So not getting an 8-4 here is not considered a failure. But you still don't want to let OG just run away with a massive lead. You don't want to be in a position where you need to come back into this one if you're a VP. Need to come feel in the map. Oh, good jump spot with the boost. He sees the head of Fiku. Jame on top of this. 
position with Norbert. Actually, I thought it would work out for a kill, but it doesn't. But he's jump spotted information twice now. And obviously, not sure if he's totally certain it's two separate players, but you'd have to assume he probably will he knows. Uh, assume that. So I, I think he knows. He spotted the op on the back of the second. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right. So that's good intel. That was outside B. Oh. Krizen actually somehow managed to deal with fame while Electronic was pushing forward. Good flash from Mikey. 4v4. Yeah, really good timing on it as well. And now they're going to be a little bit worried about the main had their eyes off of it for such a long time. Buzz could have taken a lot of space, but look at OG. They just slow things down, give VP the time to just walk away from middle and get afraid about the extremities. And now OG are going to take all that space that's been left without making any noise whatsoever. And I don't know what the case is right now, but Electronic is low on HP. He's all alone. Moto's going to take him down. This should be the end of the round. VP needs to save. They can't go into that retake. Another... Round for OG and well passed once again. Basically all off the back of Modo's one kill. Deals VP's fate. Not close enough. With no util and no kits. And 3v4 and already being hunted by Fiku. And honestly, early on... Those are the signs of a good T side from Chris and there. We had that conversation. Obviously, he used to do that on Mouse NXT. This is a completely different kettle of fish. Yeah. Completely different caliber of opposition. But he's been able to deal with it really nicely. Creating that space in towards middle. Catching the timing to get the first kill. Then they slow it down. As we said, the moment that you see electronic in towards middle, you, you're like, well, we know we have the space in towards A. We know they know we have the space in towards A, but we're not going to use it. We're just going to make sure we give them enough time to feel like they've been able to compensate. And then we're going to take everything that they leave behind in towards middle. That was incredibly intelligent there from OG in the mid round. And it's put VP in, again, a situation where they, they have the gun saved them, but it's not really a full investment. I'm sure a lot of people in chat right now are awaiting simple second game. Actually, no, I'll get back to this. It's an important point, and I want to save it for a, a moment where it doesn't, where I can talk about it and yap. Sure. I need to yap about the round right now. BQ has found Norbert, and already they did lose Krizen thanks to a bit of aggression from Jame. Will be two. Fame is here, but he can't connect with Buzz. Bomb can be retrieved. A site completely taken. It's obviously a long way away. Electronic, I think he maybe saw a glimpse of the rotation there, but he's found the AK. The question is, when does his internal clock tick over of when Fiku will arise and peak from T-Spawn? looks like, actually, Mike is coming back to help the cross, but oh. Fiku is so ready for it. They even spot the second as well, so they've got all the intel. Yeah, all of it. And you know you have Jame locked out of that A-bomb side. This is nearly impossible to walk back into. And again, I don't want to say it. This is just a half buy for VP around the safe guns, but you, you got to save once again. You're just forced to go for the safe call. And there's nothing you can do about it. This time, you're even going to get hunted, probably. Moto already walking in towards the B-bomb side, of course. The AVP is probably not the player that you want to lose, but Mikey's up close and personal as well. Flit, elevated angle. Keeps on jiggling, even though this is just oh, now by so important. Oh. And Mikey wins the fight. This is horrid right oh, VP. now. VP own a mess at the moment completely in a disarray and you know james could get caught at the end here too the point i was going to make is that obviously i think a lot of people in chat right now are awaiting simple second game in this tournament sure. for falcons and the brutal reality is if it keeps going like this it could be an elimination match against electronic and vp yep. would that have be told, something by the way you're looking at a group with virtus pro being the virtus pro that we know falcons with Dupree, go, go. Mages, Simple, Zonic, Madden, and Snappy. And then you're looking at the remaining two teams being 3D Max and an OG playing with Mikey, who's picked up from a tier 3 team that, yes, qualified for the armor, but is playing his first official in that type of a, a, of a surrounding. Crimson, yep. Buzz, Moto, and Fiku. And you'd have VP and Falcus in the elimination game. How does that sound? Say it out again, the entire thing. I know it was quite a long speech, longer than what I imagined, but yeah, <laughs> it's completely crazy.
Yeah, that chicken can't believe it either. Electronic at least has got a start to this round. He's removed BQ. And if, if BP can scramble four or five out this oh half, it's still very doable. And of course, on the disadvantaged side, and they have managed to figure this one out. Chrism crept through and got a very cheeky opening, but thankfully for Virtus Pro, it was immediately traded. Now VP will sort of retreat to this bait setup that I've seen them use many a time. Problem is, there is a molly on Buzz, and he's in a good, in good position to use it. He's got one player exposed from that position, but that is the all-important duel. The bait in now probably won't even be necessary. Mikey, one versus four. Nice shot on Electronic, but there's the instant trade by Norbert, and even if he went down, there would have been a teammate right next to him to try and do the same. Triple kill for Norbert once again in a tough situation. With OBP needs someone, he delivers with a multi. Yeah, and also another thing that we have to say right there, this could be a great opportunity for both 3D Max and OG, and probably it is considered as one, right? If you're OG, you're coming in as a last second replacement. If you're able to take down VP here, you're up against 3D Max, which is a team that's a lot closer to the level that you're used to playing against, right? Yeah. And if you're 3D Max, you get OG, which is the last second replacement in the team that has seven losses in their last eight best threes. You're going to be dancing around your homes for both those teams. But, of course, VP, not to be taken out of the equation just yet. Let's not forget, this is CT side Anubis. So the fact that they're struggling early on doesn't necessarily mean this is going to be how things go until the end. And... We already saw what happened on Dust 2. OG had an 8-4 lead halftime, lost the map. VP had a 9-3 lead halftime on Ancient, lost the map. So you never know, man. An early lead could prove to be the curse of this matchup. Yeah, we'll see. Electronic versus Simple. So early on in the tournament, we thought maybe winner's match, maybe decider match even. But... That would be, as the saying goes, absolute cinema. Game with an opening in this one. Not important one. Moving Chris and his counterpart IGL from the round. And IG will choose to get in toward A. And Jim's been spotted out toward heaven and doesn't want to replace unless it's off a teammate's contact. And Fame takes that contact. Uh, gets owned, but thankfully, Jame will trade, and Norbert is here once again in camera. Gets one quick kill. Two versus four. Flit is close. Good dig. That's so much damage. We think Norbert will get this kill in a matter of seconds, but Fiku's still healthy. Kind of in the open, trying to fight to recover this round. Oh. And Mike oh. found Jame, and Fiku has found the final two. That looked impossible 2v4, and another example of how VP are just struggling this afternoon. I'm just not sure even OG believed they just pulled this one off, by the way. This was absolutely ludicrous. And yeah, you can say that one again. That round is on Mike and Fiku entirely. Look at those fights. And Norbert played it right. He didn't want to swing on the first contact because he knew he could be going down. And yeah, Lambert is really sipping on VP right now. Uh, this is their tears right there in the jar. Oh, production, I love you. That's so good. I gotta say, yeah. that, that might be one of the biggest water bottles I think I've ever seen in my life as well. Respect Imagine Lambert. how much they've cried to fill it up so much. <laughs> oh, God. Stay hydrated, kids. Yeah. Actually, you know what's the worst part about it? Poor Lambert. Tears have salt. So, yeah, I know. He, he's just drinking the salt of VP right now. Maybe they are salty at the moment. I mean, salty about their own performance because that is not a retake you'd expect VP to lose. They had so many advantages. It wasn't just the fact that it was a 2v4. It's that VQ had to do it kind of all by himself. I just was so low. And they couldn't hit one bullet to trade him. Bad errors once again. Norbert goes aggressive outside B. Modo is better. Looking at a possibility of a 7-2 lead here. Look Chris is already behind Temple and maybe even behind the entirety of Spawn. Yeah, and that smoke is going to be such a good bait. They're going to be active enough as well in towards the B-bomb side to make sure that Chrisen is not really accounted for. And this is so uncomfortable for VP. They're thinking about the possibility. Chrisen's so quick, though. They might not be ready. and He's just going to walk in. They've left B completely. They're so afraid about middle being open. Chris is just going to clear out the bomb site. He's going to be like, hey, guys, they've just left. It's open. We, we can just walk out. They're going to have no idea. And Chris might lose his life, but he's won so much space for the team. That should be all good. Should I? Should don't, I say the line? Don't, don't even. You don't need to. It's obvious. Game say time. the line, Bart. Gotta save. 
What time is it? Time for a jam. <laughs> oh no, it's the same, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's what I was thinking as well. All but the same. Very mate. Sure. 7-5 is still possible. And if it is a 7-5, honestly, I would even put VP as slight favourites. But if it's more than that, 8-4-9-3, incredibly worrying times. You know what's the problem with it? 8-4 is actually not that big of a deal. Yeah. But again, it's, it's pissed around territory. And by that, I mean OG win the pistol in the second half. VP are in a really tough spot, right? So... You're, you're looking at it, 8-4 if VP went the pistol around, it, it's like it was an even score at halftime. But if it goes the other way, if the conversions go in favor of OG, then you're VP, you're gonna get one or maybe two proper chances to have sequences on the T side with the gun rounds. I really think VP's lack of reps on this map, full stop, is getting exposed right now. I think that, that really is the main thing for me. OG are playing very, very well, they deserve all the credit. Um... I think, as you can see, it's been a really good team performance. No one's really going above and beyond, right, on the scoreboard right now. We're just picking yeah. off the right kills at the right time. It was Fiki with that one big round, which really put a uh, knife in the heart of VP. But team performance from OG is solid. And Chris and continuing to call the shots. He'll be delighted with how his team is looking right now. But he'll want to get this one over the line. Could be a bit of a fairy tale win coming in as a late replacement, of course, for the unpaid roster in X Bleed. How ironic would it be if OG actually get paid from this tournament? <laughs> Let's see. Definitely will need to finish off VP here if they want to. That is if they reach the spots that actually give you some prize money. DQ. Get an opening kill electronic with one in response. Buzz and Moto incredibly low on HP because of the util, but it doesn't matter. They're all going down like dominoes. And it's just fame left. He needs a big play. There goes the first one. There goes the second. Might need a third. Switches to the ESP. Just oh. tap it away. A lot of damage. But not a third kill. On to Chris. And at least he's given Norbert a chance. No HP behind Cake. I'll know that bomb plot is where it is. And there's the HE in play. It's Norbert versus Fiku. Norbert has been so imperative for VP in these clutches, but he doesn't know where Fiku's playing from. Another big round from Fiku. We called him out at the beginning of this entire series, and we want to see more from him, and he has been imperative in this final map decider. Brilliant work once again in mid, dealing with James on the timing. Smoke being blown open. Buzz takes that one. Fame really does almost everything he can do here. Even with the USP, almost ran down prison. But not to be. 8-4 at least confirmed. You know what's the worst part about dropping so many close rounds if you're VP? You, you feel like you're so close, but yet you're so far. You press tab as A2. You don't feel like it's an A2 game. There's been way too many clutches that have gone in favor of OG. And VP know it, but they also know that financially they're going to be the ones on the receiving end of all that collateral damage financially. Look at the buy once again. And look at oh. that opening kill. He even spotted the old there. This is so much information. If Buss is able to get out of here alive or, God forbid, even oh, take no. down Jame, this could be really difficult for VP. Oh, nothing's going right for them. They try and retake B. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my word. If Flip didn't get that kill. They try and retake B after they've lost a player on A. Jame gets goosed through the wall for 8 HP, I think it was, which was kind of crazy. But Chrism's already in Temple, and Flit is just not ready for that. So much aggressive, assertive control over the map for OG in this entire game. Modo deals with Jame, and VP are getting embarrassed. Yeah, and now you're seeing Modo as well starting to land some crisper shots with the AVP, right? This is probably the first time we've seen some level of confidence coming out of him. Great work with the supportive flash to set up Buzz for a kill. He puts a lot of pressure onto Jame, which forces Norbert to go for that aggressive play in towards B and Fiku. The fact that he gets a double out of this is straight up ludicrous. OG are just all over Virtus Pro right now, and we were talking about whether it was going to be an 8 4 or 7 5. Well, how about a 10 2? How does that one sound to you? The OG, like music to their ears. A tournament that I didn't even know they were going to be playing in. 
And look at them. How good the utility is. They're just not holding back whatsoever. Pace is being oh continued. And nor is Fame. That is wild to burst through the smoke on that timing. But he's been smoked off on the flank. Naded off on the flank. Buzz has found electronic. Beef has even got a flank possibility at some point. Fame's little lurk behind will not work. And Fiku can flank the flanker as well. Flit is here, but he needs two kills somehow from this position. I can't quite believe what I'm seeing here. VP, the lack of reps on Anubis is really showing them up right now. And we really could be seeing Simple versus Electronic in the elimination match. It's 10-2 for OG at half. Yeah, it's flanks on flanks on flanks and racks on racks on racks and rounds on rounds. For OG right now, would you really believe it? Going into this matchup, going into this group, OG came into the tournament less than 24 hours ago. Unpaid were supposed to play. Yesterday, this time, we didn't know it was going to be OG. Now we know, and I'm pretty sure that VP know it as well. If you're figuring things out, they probably thought they, they got unlucky. Just playing against the team that got called in a couple hours ago, but hey. We talked about how big of an opportunity this is for OG to be invited to the Thunder pick as well. They, they played the qualifier, right? They lost to alternate attacks in the qualifier. But now, they get a direct spot in the thing. And they've been playing really, really well. This best around. This could seal the deal here. This could send them into the winner's matchup. And Electronic is so oh, much yikes. pressure. It's so many fights. You just can't get a grip of the situation. Finding fame comfortably, even with that little work smoke put into play. He's going to get another. Going to create gaps in that smoke to make it even easier. And it's Jane with a P250 and a 1v4. OG are going to be going up 11 to 2. Is this VP's master plan? Drop to the elimination match and just eliminate simple early doors? I jest, of course. But that, that's such a. It, it, it's such a hilarious prospect that we could see. <laughs> we could see simple return after one year of Counter-Strike just to make life even more miserable for Electronic on DP. Oh, God. Don't imagine. Even. Imagine. Don't even. Plot yeah. will come through. It'll give them something in the next round. Actually, they didn't realize where James was playing from. Fiki just ran in completely on a timing that he wasn't expecting. But all good. And we'll get the instant trade thanks to Mikey. And uh, the whole team performance from OG has been so, so good. As I said, VQ yeah. has had incredible moments. Buzz has had incredible moments. But the other three, like, they don't have, like, a huge amount of kills on the scoreboard. But they've all been imperative in certain round situations at certain moments. And VP have just not been able to deal with them. Yeah, and uh, as we said, right, results have not been great. It's been far from it for OG on Anubis. For us to say that they are actually a, a proper and a really really good anubis team but you're looking at the way that they're moving around the map you're looking at the way that they they play that t side now the fact that they're trying to be and probably will try to be as proactive as possible on the ct side as well vp at least get a bomb plant so we're gonna get to see the forest by but og just two rounds away from sending virtus pro to face off against simple and the falcons in that elimination game that obviously is going to be delayed a little bit because of how long this one's took, taken, yeah. but still will be an absolute banger. And early on, we'll have to say bye-bye to two teams that you're probably thinking are the favorites to go out of their group. Yeah, teams that you want to see in the main event in Berlin, of course, and uh, might not get a chance to see them. Modo was going to continue to go aggressive outside A for a second there, but hops away and actually might bait Krizen in. Fame is just not expecting it at all. It will be a flashing play. Actually, it works really well. Thankfully, Modo will reface, sort of obviously not getting caught by that flash. But Electronic might need one kill here. That's a great, great Did one. Did you see Fiku. the second? I'm not sure. No. Nope. It's a position for Mikey. And there we go. M4 fade getting put to good use. And it's down to James. Nice tap on the first. And he gets a one versus one against counterpart Orpa. But it's rifle versus rifle. And actually, Galil versus Galil. If VP want any chance in this game, they need a Jame clutch here. Yeah, and he knows. He knows that Moto was aggressive in towards A, so he's expecting him to come out of connector. James taking a great advanced position. Issue is, Moto doesn't have a kit, doesn't have a smoke, doesn't have a Molotov. Nothing to flush him out with. And he's going to have to make a gamble. Actually, it's the pre fire walking into the angle, but Jame clutches up to keep VP's dreams of an upper bracket run alive. Needed a lot here. 
Jane, but if there was someone on that VP team that you would entrust with a clutch like this, it probably would be him, even when he doesn't have the APP available. Yeah. They're not out of the deep just yet, though. No, I mean, you always feel like you have a chance when your opponents are on 11 and not 12. You can afford one mistake, but only one. And uh, it depends on what your definition of afford is. Yeah, exactly. When does that mistake happen is quite important as well. If, uh, if you drop the round, but you're already on 9 or 10, then it's all right. If you drop it now, then it's probably game over. OG have a buy that VP do need to be wary of here. There's a mostly full investment with the scout and five sevens. Deagle on Fiku. Aim looking to peak, but there's a good counter flash and he's mid jump away. And look at the cavalry arriving right now. Flit needs to be um, careful. He's done so much damage. It might activate the nade. It does. James gets one okay. and two. We can relax. Calm down. All good. Ooh. Wipe the brow. Thank you. I was starting to get stressed out. <laughs> At least they were, even the fights that they were losing, they were doing a lot of damage. So you, you were just waiting for the moment when a single VP player would mull down more than two people and make sure that this round doesn't go out the window. It's a good recovery from Jame. A 1v2 clutch in the last one. A triple here. Reset to OG's money. Are you ready for the ultimate comeback? The comeback of comebacks. We had a 4-8-1 on map 1, a 3-9-1 on map 2, so we we're apparently we we're just progressing. Nice shot from Mikey. We see the cheeky smile as well. He's like, yeah. uh-huh. I headshot Jame with a scout. And you know, like, you already brought it up a little bit, but it's completely new surroundings for Mikey, right? I mean, he's been playing with Unity in sort of Tier 3, even Tier 4 Counter-Strike for a, you know, a little while now. Um, obviously, he really has put his name on the map by helping getting Unity to that RMR uh, in just under a month's time. And, and being is... crazy while doing so, by the way. We're talking yes. about Ents, Rhino, and Koi were the teams that that uh unity beat and they lost to or and, and rhino and koi and they lost to monty mike uh, mike average 130 and that's yes. that's by the way that's one uh, that's 2.1 rating not, not yes two. that that did get changed yeah so yeah super impressive and obviously that's why yoji have looked at him and as we say that's not really true been confirmed yet but I think the idea in our, our minds at least is that mikey might still play the rmr with unity while playing for og here this is technically sure. like a stand-in in inverted commas here for og but long-term goal wouldn't surprise me if it is to join this team had a chance to be mikey after a compass game a little while back and uh, obviously, I had to pull the question and ask, what's the plan with OG, my friend, after all the rumors circulating? And obviously, all he could give us was a cheeky grin. And that cheeky grin probably tells you everything about his future. He's been incredible. Yeah. Straight up. No two ways about it. Actually, a fun fact about him. This is something that I, I for whatever reason, remembered back in 2021. But, you know, there was a time when he played one best of three with the Swedish lineup going by the name Dogs that had Lumi, Adam B, and Sus on it. Oh, really? Yeah. Just port. Yeah, that was that was a, a, an EDC close qualifier or whatever. I, I right. just remember I, I just remember the name from back then, and I looked it up. I was like, Jesus, he, he's been around and about. But yeah, other than that, this is his first international project or yeah. first international official because it's not his project yet right officially I know. yeah I know allegedly yeah it's gonna be really interesting to see how he does obviously uh, not the fastest game in history but he's really shown up in important moments especially on the okay. second half of ancient let's start talking about jane by the way because this form is terrifying he's 17 yes. and 9 he is leading vp to a potential oh! come back oh my god someone call 911 because crescent just broke the backs a VP quite literally. Where did that come from? Oh, he just crept through mid and dropped down behind them. That is insane. Buzz should go down. He's not aware, aware of Electronic being on that angle. So it brings it back into a 2v2. But Crescent are being an absolute nuisance right now. And Fiku has got his hands. They're holding hands now in this 2v1 to get OG to match points. Norbert 
has been so critical for VP in some of these rounds. He's been dragging them through some tough situations when needed. Oh, but he's looked away at exactly the wrong time. It's so frustrating. And Chrism will take it with the picked up orb. VP have a long, long way to go on this comeback. OG need only one. Yeah, and you can see the frustration already is there for VP, right? Jay was doing so much work in the last couple of rounds. All that they needed, OG, was one hero play in the right time from the right person. And of course, it had to be the in-game leader of Chris. And as we said, easily one of the most underrated in-game leaders and players in the world right now. I mean, yeah, we're not talking tier one because he hasn't really gotten to play on that level, but it's young in-game leaders, proactive, Taking a lot oh, no. of responsibility, and James doesn't even pull the trigger against Mikey. He's going to burn to a crisp. Oh, a revenge for the previous round for Mikey. The nade combination with the fire gets James stuck in the fire and flames like it's quicksand. Can't get away. Orp will be nabbed on flip, but 5v4 already. OG have been all over VP like a cheap suit. And like a cheap suit, it's going to leave a mark on the skin. They're going to be scratching themselves after this one. Mostly their heads with confusion. Yeah. Oh, usually that's not the part of your body you scratch after wearing a cheap suit, but they, <laughs> they will be scratching the heads. Yeah. Buzz behind the spoke and A-Main. Fame and Norbert together. And he's got the exact right timing on it. He finds another multi-kill. Flip will trade. And Electronic finds Chrism. But the damage is significant. OG on the brink here. Modo aggresses. There's the kill with the AWP. It's all Electronic. What a big upset we have on our hands here. VP showing that that form we saw a little bit of an improvement on in recent times. Maybe has come back to bite them the wrong way. And... We're on the edge of seeing this man right here, Electronic, go up against his former teammate, Simple, in the elimination match. That's exactly what we are going to get. Can you believe it? OG, a late replacement to this tournament for Unpaid, have managed to get a win over one of the favorites. I don't think anyone believes it, right? OG were not supposed to pull off this win. Maybe. There was some arguments to be made about 3D Max before the start of the game against the Falcons, right? Maybe there was a lot more justification. There are a lot more under, a lot more situations that were understandable. This one was not supposed to yeah. be that close.